I have enjoyed looking at different biblical characters really all the way back to early July and, and just finding out how they fit into our life story. And last Sunday we looked at Jesus and this Sunday we look at Jesus and how he fits into our story. And next Sunday we're going to start a, a whole new series called Christian Ethics. That's, that's waiting for us in October. But today is about looking at Jesus' story and the idea and the concept of relationship. Are we willing to be interested to enter in? And that takes a risk to do that, to enter into a relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who walks alongside us, and he does know everything about us. And that's not easy sometimes. Really, very few people, if anybody, knows everything about us. Sometimes our spouse does, or a really, really good friend. But Jesus knows everything. And it's not about guilting us and putting us in a mirror and saying, I know what you did wrong. It's about saying, I'm here to love you because I, I want what's best for you in this relationship. And so we're going to look at this on this life-changing walk, just a seven-mile, all-day walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And, and really ask ourselves, do I want to be in relationship with Jesus? And, and maybe you're like, well, I'm already there. But do I want to be in a deeper relationship than where I'm at now? Because this is good, but it's not working. I want more out of my faith. So let's look at that first. Let's look at that in prayer. Gracious Lord, just help us get into that mode where we do examine that relationship. There's probably not a person here, Lord, that one of us can not say, hey, we're already in relationship. We can all raise our hands to that, including myself. But Holy Spirit, help us examine where we want to go with that. Help it not be a, a, a relationship of religious habits, but a friendship. So we just lift that up to you, Holy Spirit. And, and as we examine this, this life-changing walk, this walk to Emmaus, Lord, help us look at our lives. Not out of guilt, but just examine where we might want to go with that. In the midst of grace and love. And Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I really mean that. With, with gratitude and expectation. But humbly, help the words of my mouth be your words, not mine, your words. I just lift that prayer to you, Lord, and we all lift up that way that the Holy Spirit can help us listen to you. The distractions, Lord, be put on the shelf. Help us listen to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we've got this story going on that Deb read, and it's pretty simple. It's the day of the resurrection. Uh, some have seen him alive. There's been a report all about Jerusalem now. It travels just like news travels in Painesville. We know that he's alive. We've seen it. And, and a couple of people are, are, are walking that seven-mile journey. I'm sure others are too. And they're walking down the hill to Emmaus. It could be two disciples, it could be a husband and wife, uh, Matthew's gospel, none of the gospels really allude to who it is. We just know it's two people. We, name, we know one of them has the name Pelops, because it, it alludes to that in the reading. And as they're walking, Jesus takes that risk. Jesus takes the risk, but he does it with patience. And he enters into a relationship with them. That's the first thing. Jesus is always wanting to be in relationship with us. I, I hope I'm kind of past that whole peer pressure thing, but uh, some of the young people, when they get into middle school and high school, they, they describe the, the, the ways of, of, of the social status, whether it's pains, I don't care what school it is, whether it's a private Christian school or whatever, but they kind of describe it to me as the, as the food chain. Where do you fall in the food chain? It's really hard to listen to because, you know, it's a, it's a peer pressure world. Relationships take risks. And some people don't want to be in relationships because it doesn't meet their needs. They don't want to be with us because we don't have the status they want in a relationship. Or we don't have the tools they want. But Jesus, he's not about that. He just wants to be in relationship. And the other thing that happens, well with Jesus is we kind of turned upside down our relationship with Jesus it looks like. We really have. Over the years, we've taken the relationship with Jesus and we've made it kind of a guilt horrifying factor. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I literally had preachers 
preached to me, I don't like this, I don't agree with this, and I know people do this, and they come up, hey, if you die today, do you know where you're going? I don't like that approach. I want to look at them and say, well, I don't want to die today, so let's not talk about that. You know, guilt and, and fear never help anybody in relationship. But it seems like we think it's a quick approach to get people to come to Christ. I've shared this with you before. I'll share it again. Some of you may remember. But Sven and Oli were just done with a new sign they made. They got some brushes from the local hardware store and they painted on the new sign in front of their good Lutheran church. I'll pick on the Lutheran church. Maybe it was a Methodist church. And they, they painted up there. The end is near. Turn around now. Before it's too late. They popped that sign right out of the front yard of their church. And they sat there with the new overalls and the fresh paint. And, and some guy came by and yelled at him out of the pickup truck, I hate you religious fanatics. He went down the hill and all of a sudden, boom, bang, crash. Spin looked at Ole and Ole looked at Spin and they smiled. Spin said, maybe we should have just painted bridge out of hell. Fear and guilt don't get anywhere. And we got to stop doing that, and Jesus never wanted us to do that. It doesn't even show that anywhere in the Gospels. Instead, he just wants to be in relation. He wants to take a risk and meet us where we are at in our lives. He's not concerned about all the stuff we did. We'll take care of that slowly. He just wants to meet us with grace. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near with and went with them. He didn't grab them by the shirt tail. He didn't yell at them and preach them. He went with them. And talking with each other about all the things that had happened with their eyes were kept from recognizing them. Now we can read into that. Well, maybe that was on purpose. Whatever. The point is, is Jesus didn't hit them with everything at once. If Jesus would have hit me with everything at once, I would have ran the opposite direction faster than you can wonder. Or say, if he would have hit me with all the plans he had for me, I said, not me, I'm not signing up for that. He just hits us where we are. And he does that so that we can be interested, interested in taking a risk with him. Because it does require us. It's not a one-sided relationship. I wish I could say it's that easy. I wish it would say, we don't have to do anything. We just be in relationship with it. It'll all be good. It's not that simple. A relationship with Jesus requires us to take the risk and get in relationship with him. And start engaging in conversation with him. Start talking to him. Start reading God's word. Start putting some effort towards the relationship. And it's not about all the, the sin we do. It's just about talking with God beyond the, the effortless thing we call religious habit. I think of the guy that was being interviewed by the organization, and, and, and he just wanted to be hired and hired. And they said, well, we just don't have any room for you. And finally, the guy looked and said, look, whatever you hire me for, don't worry. What little work I do, you'll never know I'm here. <laughs> That's not the kind of relationship Jesus is looking for from us. And this isn't about guilt either. It's a relationship that gets beyond religious habits and starts talking to God. Simply in prayer. Small group ministry. Maybe a service project. Maybe helping out. Maybe just sitting down and reading a, a couple paragraphs in God's Word, the Bible, each night. Or in the morning, whatever works best. It's deeper than religious. Religion habits is this. I... I was, and this actually does happen. It has happened. I was talking with someone in the gym, beginning to build a relationship with them as we're working out together and, and I'm talking and every so often. I finally got up enough relationship with them without putting a lot of risk to it. And, and I, I just said, so do you go to church on a regular basis? And, well, I've been to church every so often, Pastor. I said, really cool. And I just said, what church do you go to? Well, it's a church and he named it. And he said, who's the pastor? I wasn't doing this on purpose. I really didn't expect this to happen at all. I felt bad. We, we both ended up laughing about it. What I'm going to say next is I thought, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I said, well, who's the pastor? Because I didn't know. And, and he goes, oh, um, ah, um. And he finally starts like, I don't know who the pastor is, pastor. I haven't been there for a couple of Easter's. <laughs> I felt so bad. I did. He just laughed. I said, don't worry. 
said, it's okay. He said, I didn't mean to do this. He said, no, but you're getting out of truth. And he started confiding in me. I'm not making this up. He said, I need to get back with God. Religious habits is not a relationship. A relationship is saying, I want to meet you where, where you're at, Jesus, and I want you to meet me where I'm at. The mud, the manure, and the joy, and the smiles, and everything. And I just want to talk with you as we travel to Emmaus together. So Jesus began to take that risk, and he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And it gets interesting here. They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, and this is where we get a name, it could be two disciples, it could be a husband and wife, was Caleb's, and he answered them, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there these days, the death, the resurrection, all this stuff? And at this point, you can end the conversation, walk away and say, I'm done with this. And a lot uh, often that happens. But now they begin to jump from just a relationship to wanting to know, are you the Savior? And will you be the Savior in my life? It's interesting what happens here. They begin to have a conversation, and Jesus begins to listen to them. And as we read the scriptures, and as Deb read it, they begin to say, you know, Jesus, who was a prophet, mighty in word and deed, and, and they begin to tell him how they watched him make blind people see. They watched him raise Lazarus just a couple weeks before his death, within a week or so, in Bethany, just not too far from Emmaus, down the hill from Jerusalem. They watched him raise Lazarus, who had been dead for many days, come to life. And they, they, they told him he did all this stuff. I, I witnessed it with my own eyes. And, and then they get into the scripture and they say, we thought he'd be the, the new leader to free us from the Roman Empire. He thought he'd be the one. And isn't that where we jump to first? We, we get in a relationship with Jesus. I'm there at times. And I want Jesus just to fix everything I've done. I want Jesus to fix the problem in North Korea. I want Jesus to fix the problem in the stock market. I want Jesus to fix the problem in Washington, D.C. I want Jesus to fix the problem in St. Paul, with the governor in the house not getting along. I want Jesus to fix the problem with no money in our school systems. I want Jesus to be the new leader. Jesus is not interested in being a leader. And it's clear. He's interested in being a savior. He's interested in giving us peace when the world just gets cut out from underneath us. He's interested in telling us that heaven is real when death knocks on our door in ways we never expected it to. And he's interested in telling us, I love you, when a friend comes and hugs us and prays with us and cries with us. That's what a relationship with Jesus is about. Not a new fad or a new leader. Leaders never really go that far when we look at them. But Jesus, he lives forever. But we had hope. They said that he was the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it's the third day since these things have taken place. In other words, is he dead or alive? And so as we begin to bring this, everyone has a story to an end. And if you look at Jesus, are we willing to look at him for a relationship beyond religious habit? Are we willing to say, I'm giving you a chance, God? I'm just giving you a chance. I want you as a savior, not as a religious habit. <coughs> Excuse me, not as a new fad. Not as one that's going to save the world. Not as one that's going to bring world peace. But I want you as inner peace. And all of a sudden, we are challenged to think about that in our relationship with Jesus. I remember... A friend of mine, a couple of year, number of years ago, and I've seen this in other men also, but this was a couple of years ago. It was Monday, and I had lunch with this friend, a Christian believer, and, and he had gone through a weekend of a men's retreat. All of us have the chance to do it. It's called Unido San Cristo, and there's one coming up in January. But he had gone through one, and we had lunch together on a Monday. And I hadn't been at the retreat. I was not a speaker or anything. 
And I, I saw him, and he was just smiling ear to ear. I mean this. And, and I know that in Minnesota, we don't do that as men. We're very stoic. Last thing we want to do is hug each other. We don't want to do that in public, because then we, you know, Ugh, that's a little too much. And he greets me, and he hugs me. That threw me off, because I don't hug that much either, to be honest with you. And, and he's just smiling. You can't get away from it. And I finally, as we're waiting for our food, we had ordered it. I said, what is going on? And he smiled and he said, I found Jesus this weekend again. I found Jesus this weekend again. And I just was happy for him. I was happy for him. Because he brought back a new relationship with his Savior. Folks, it just takes reading scripture. It just takes getting more involved. It just takes saying to the Lord in the honesty of the moment, I'm tired of religion. I want you in relationship. And Jesus continued this conversation. And as they got to Emmaus, he, he wanted to go on. But they said, no, do not go on. Come with us. Stay with us. We're, we're, we're in relationship with you. We don't want to lose you. And they break bread and they have communion. And all of a sudden, they begin to realize the Savior, the resurrected Lord that they're asking in this question. The resurrected Lord is right there in front of them. And when they did not find his body, they go on to tell Jesus that some women and men went to the resurrected tomb. They didn't find his body today. And they came back as we were leaving Jerusalem. And they told that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. That's the relationship we want to be in. David's going to cue up a, a song for us. It's called The Well. It's by Casting Crowns. And as he cues it up, it just, it just talks about where we can be at in life. And yet the well, Jesus as well, we can go there. And we get in a deeper... Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind.